you're recognized for your five minutes of, uh, of testimony. And thank you again. Thank you, uh, Matt. Unmute. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, have unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the uh, House Subcommittee for inviting me to testify today. Since 1994, I've cared for thousands of families living with ALS. As a clinical trialist, I designed and led many ALS trials, including the recent trials of AMX0035 and Neuron. I'm grateful for longstanding support from both the NIH and the FDA for my research. We are at a major therapeutic turning point in ALS. There have been huge advances in understanding the underlying biology of ALS, and this has led directly to several exciting drug targets and positive phase two and three trial results in people. Yet patients can't get access to these treatments. We must act now to be both global leaders in the science and therapy development, but we also must be global leaders in regulatory approaches by the FDA to help all those living with ALS today. There are two pieces of legislation before you, at least two, that can define success and options for tens of thousands of people living with ALS and other serious neurodegenerative disorders. I, I um, beg you and ask you to approve them. The first is the Act for ALS, which will support expanded access to ALS investigational therapies for people with ALS who do not qualify for trials. More than half of the people with ALS do not qualify for trials. At the Healy Center for ALS at Mass General, we have 130 of our patients receiving nine different treatments in expanded access. These patients were not eligible for any trials. This was their only option. EAPs can be designed to also learn about ALS. For example, in one of our EAPs, we learned how to best dose the treatment using biomarkers. In another, we found that people's breathing was getting better. One person noted that they could swim in the pool again. Another uh, person found that they could be off their mechanical uh, ventilator for a few more hours a day. Expanded access absolutely does not interfere with clinical trials or drug development. It can help it. The second bill is the Promising Pathway Act that would allow for conditional approval of promising treatments in phase two and three. We need this faster pathway for approvals for treatments less. This is already happening in other serious illnesses like cancer, and it's happening for ALS in other countries, but not in the U.S. This is why we're here today. Progression in ALS is dauntingly rapid. After diagnosis, median survival is two to three years. And it, this is getting more common. The worldwide number of people with ALS is expected to rise more than 40% in the next decade. There's an urgency to act. There was no hope before, but there is hope now. Thousands of people are studying this illness. There's 160 companies in it. We understand some of the biology. We have good targets and we have positive treatments. This is again, a major therapeutic turning point. We partnered with the small company Amelix to develop the AMX0035 drug. And we showed last year, a year ago, we published this in New England Journal of Medicine, that this drug uh, pro uh, slowed disease progression and it prolonged survival. This is a combination of two old drugs. We know the safety of these two drugs. And while this drug, AMX0035, is under review in Canada for full approval, uh, and it's going to be submitted to EMA in Europe for provisional approval, there's no option for provisional approval here in the United States. This means a drug developed and tested here will likely be approved elsewhere first. That's not good. We've also heard reports from people in the neuron trial um, of improvements in function. We don't usually hear this. There were also some important biomarkers uh, and better responses in people who uh, were earlier in the disease. We need continued dialogue with the FDA on how to move those type of treatments forward. Our goal is to make sure everyone with ALS has options, whether that's in the trial or expanded access, and no one should be told there's nothing to do. We're seeing pharma companies go to other countries for their phase one and two studies. They claim that the regulations are less onerous in Canada or Australia. We're starting to see drugs approved faster in other countries. My request um, is that we continue to be world leaders in regulatory science and approaches to accelerate therapy in ALS and other serious disorders. We need to do that. We are the leaders in the science. Working together and creatively and flexibly, 
we're going to find the cures for ALS and help our patients and tens of thousands of people. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Um, Sadkovich, thank you for your um, most welcome testimony.